assalamu alaikum this is lecture 7 of data security and encryption and in this lecture we are going to continue from the previous lecture that was about the classical encryption techniques in the last lecture we started with the symmetric cipher model and we defined some certain terms and definitions that are used in the cryptography and data security. We overviewed a model of cryptography and we defined the terms cryptanalysis and brute force attack and ways to conduct cryptanalysis and uh, brute force attacks. We uh, discussed a couple of techniques to substitute the original message with the cipher text. The main techniques we discussed was Caesar cipher and mono alphabetic cipher. In this lecture, we are going to continue studying about substitution techniques and we are going to discuss four techniques here named as play phase cipher, hill cipher, poly alphabetic cipher and one time pad. After that, we are going to discuss the second technique in cryptography and encryption that was named as transposition technique. And we are going to discuss a similar method called rotor machine and we will conclude this lecture with some insights about the steganography techniques. As I have discussed in the last lecture that the symmetric encryption is referred as single key encryption technique and it is quite widely used uh, since 1970s and uh, it was used uh, in many applications before the computer era. So the symmetric encryption technique is most widely used technique and uh, it, uh, it provides a general model for symmetric encryption process. So continuing our discussion uh, with the substitution techniques, we have another technique called Playfair Cipher. It is a best known multiple letter encryption technique or encryption cipher. So far we have discussed only the techniques with single letter encryption cipher. So it treats some diagrams, uh, diagrams we defined as two letters in your plain text. So it treats diagram in the plain text as a single unit and translates these units into cipher diagram. So it is usually based on a five cross five matrix of letters constructed using a keyword. It was invented by a British scientist Sir Charles Wheatstone in 1854 and it was quite widely used uh, as a standard field system by British Army in World War I and the US Army and the Allied forces during the World War II. So this slide shows the implementation of play fail key mechanism using a 5 cross 5 matrix. So, uh, as we have discussed in the last slide, it is um, important to uh, use a keyword. For example, we have used a keyword monarchy here. So the play fair key matrix state that you have to fill the letters of the keywords minus the duplicates from left to right. So you have to start from the first row from left to right. So you start with the M O N A R C H Y. So when you read at the right uh, from left to right and then you can start from top to bottom that means you can move into the next row. So you fill the uh, letters of your keyword. So in our case we have filled the letters monarchy uh, using uh, 7, uh, 8 values of our matrix. So when you fill the keyword, uh, then you can fill the remainder of matrix with the remaining letters in the alphabetic order. So 
so we started from b because a was already filled and then we did d because c was already filled and we did it till the end of the alphabet in uh, one important characteristic here is that this cipher uses i and j equivalently that means you can use i and j in the same uh, same cell so that will uh, mean that you can get the 5 plus 5 matrix and with the total value of 25 letters in the alphabet and you have to remember that this uh, scheme playfair encryption scheme is applied to a set of letters usually diagram diagram stands for two letters at a time So there are certain rules for uh, applying this encryption method to a simple text. So first rule states that uh, we have to we have to embed some uh, random letters uh, for replacement of uh, repeated uh, letters. For example, if we get uh, uh, a word uh, which contains uh, repeated letters for example if we get a word with a double a uh, we have to embed it with some another letter so you can use any letter such as a z and a so repetition of letters is not allowed in the play fair key matrix similarly if you get uh, two letters that are uh, placed in the same row so you can use uh, one step shift in the letters for example if we get a letter uh, n a in our plain text we shift the letters by one point to the right and the translated text will be a r and we get the uh, initial text a r that will be shifted to r m that means if you reach at the end of uh, row you can start over uh, from the first row again uh, sorry first column again a similar rule can also be applied to uh, if you get two letters uh, in the same column for example if we get the letters uh, you can say P V as a plain text we can replace by one letter in the column we can get V O similar case uh, that means uh, if we reach end of the column we can start from the top again so we have covered uh, two rules that means a letter can uh, two letters can occur in uh, either row or in either column so third case is uh, occurrence of letters in the uh, diagonal or in other words letters with the different row number or different column number for example if we get a text uh, diagram b p in the initial text so in this case uh, you can replace the letter uh, with the uh, with the same row and the column occupied by the other letter for example you can use uh, the row for the p and the column for the b so in this case our p b becomes E A and there is a slight mistake here P B becomes H S how this has become H S uh, that we have stated that for each row you can use the column of that specific uh, 
letter and for each other letter you can use the column of the first letter so in this case we replaced B with the H that corresponded to the column of P and P with the S that corresponded to the column of B that means it can create a rectangle so you can replace your uh, diagram in a rectangle so these were the three rules uh, let me repeat it for your better understanding so if we get two letters uh, in the same row we replace or shift by one digit for example if we get a r again that will be shifted to or m because we reach at the end of row similarly if we get two letters in the column such as q w here we can replace with one digit or one letter shift such as w n and if we get the letters that are, do not correspond to the rows or the columns for example if we get any two random letters such as uh, if we pick uh, two letters O A so we pick the uh, one letter and we uh, sorry these are again in the same column so we pick uh, these different letters such as O T so this will correspond to the row of same letter and the column of other letter similarly this will correspond to the row of this letter and the column of first letter so if we get O T our replacement will be R P So Playfair cipher is uh, more advanced than the previous ciphers we have already discussed. So for one thing, uh, in the previous letters we only had 26 uh, keys or 26 letters to replace. However, if we use the diagrams, that means two letters at a time, we get the replacement of 26 cross 26, that means 676 diagrams. So large key base will uh, give us a benefit that will, uh, our diagrams will be very uh, more difficult to uh, find out. Furthermore, uh, uh, the relative frequency of individual letters uh, exhibits a much greater range than those of the diagrams making frequency analysis much more difficult. So for uh, these reasons, the Playfair cipher uh, was long time considered unbreakable however by the current standard uh, it is very uh, easy to break the security of Playfair cipher because uh, it still leaves uh, much of the structure of the plain text language intact that means if you replace uh, certain diagrams that are very common in the English language with some other words so you can uh, leave the uh, you can say pattern in your cipher text so that the attacker can easily identify so this diagram uh, represents the effectiveness of playfair and the other ciphers uh, the line labeled as plain text plots are typical frequency distribution of 26 alphabet characters uh, there is no distinction between upper and lower case characters uh, in each uh, of the ordinary text you can see that the uh, playfair cipher has the higher relative frequency of occurrences of letters than the remainder of two uh, other algorithms which we are going to discuss shortly in the next slides so playfair cipher uh, is better than the single uh, letter cipher however it behaves very poorly in terms of multi or poly alphabetic ciphers
uh, Hill cipher was developed by a mathematician Lester Hill and the strength of this uh, cipher is completely hides the single letter frequencies so you can also hide the more uh, letter frequencies if you use a larger matrix so typically a 3 by 3 Hill cipher hides not only the single letter frequencies but the two letter frequencies as well so it is strong against the cipher text only attack but can easily be broken down with the plain text, non plain text attack. The implementation can be represented by an equation C is equal to PK mod 26. So, in this case, C stands for the cipher text, and the P stands for the original text, K stands for the key, and that will be a matrix in Hill cipher case. Uh, typically a 3 by 3 matrix so you have to divide the each value by 26 and take the remainder of the, uh, that value that will be uh, encoded as cipher text so in case of 3 by 3 matrix uh, we can specify a key of different letters or digits for example, in this case, if we can specify a key of letter number 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 25, 22, 21. That means it will correspond to A, B, C and letter number 7, 8, 9, 25, 23, 2, 21. So you multiply it with each of the character from your uh, original text P so K multiplied by P will be equal to C so for example if we get the letters uh, two letters here such as uh, A C in letter so we multiply this matrix you can say B A C we multiply this matrix uh, with these letters so we will get a resulting value and we will divide that value with 26 for taking and then taking mod or remainder of this value the uh, resultant will be a cipher text the next techniques refer to the poly alphabetic ciphers poly alphabetic ciphers uh, substitution ciphers usually improves on the simple mono alphabetic techniques by using different mono alphabetic situation as one proceeds to the plain text so all these techniques have the following features in common number one is a set of related mono alphabetic substitution rules is used that means you can use multiple mono alphabetic substitution techniques in a series so a key is determined uh, key determines which particular rule is chosen for a given transformation so key specifies that which of the rules from the set of related and mono alphabetic uh, rules is used for uh, enciphering our text so one of the famous algorithm is Wiener cipher it is best known and uh, one of the simplest poly alphabetic substitution cipher in this scheme the set of related mono alphabetic substitution rules consist of the 26 Caesar ciphers with shift from 0 to 25. Each cipher is generated by a key letter in which the cipher letters that substitutes for the plain text letter A. So again uh, we have to represent we can represent this algorithm in a equation called for uh, in cycling of algorithm and we use the previous algorithm we used in first lecture of classical encryption technique that stated that C is equal to uh, encryption algorithm used by key and in some original text P so it is uh, actually implementation of mono alphabetic cipher so our P will be a set of letters from P0, P1 to up to Pn 
similarly we can use the keys so keys will be k is equal to k0 k1 up to k m so m will specify that how many keys from 0 to 25 you want to use so if we use the caesar al algorithm in this uh, example or implementation of mono alpha, uh, poly alphabetic algorithm we know that the caesar algorithm was p plus k however in this uh, algorithm we embed it with the mod of 26 actually there are 26 letters in alphabet so uh, for normal cases the first letter of the key is added to the first letter of the plain text for example if we are replacing the first letter p0 it will be added with the key k0 and the second letter will be added with the second key so on to the m so if we reach to the limit of keys for example if we are using 25 keys and the text is longer than 25 and we want to replace the p26 and we will again restart our keys from the p0 sorry k0 hey. so this results uh, us with the uh, final version of our algorithm in the Caesar implementation of cipher in the winners cipher so that will state that each of the encrypted or cipher letter will be a combination of original letter in that location with addition to key of that location with mod of m so m in normal cases will be 26 so if you use the lesser key you can use any value of m and it will be complemented with the mod of 20 six on overall value of our uh, resulting equation similarly if you want to decrypt the message uh, on the receivers end you just have to minus the pi uh, from uh, pfi minus pkfi mod 26 into mod 26 so you will get the uh, resultant value so as you can see uh, that uh, to encrypt the message a key is not needed as long as the message usually the key is repeated uh, using the keyword for example in the keyword uh, if the keyword is deceptive the message we are discovered save yourself is encrypted as this value for example our key was deceptive and the message was long we are discovered save yourself so we repeated the keys to match the length of our plain text so we use the winner cipher to actually decode the information in this manner and this will be our cipher so this implementation gives us a strength uh, that there is a multiple cipher text for each plain text letter one of each unique letter is the keyword therefore the letter frequency information is very much hidden however not all the knowledge of plain text structure is lost that means using uh, this more uh, secure manner you have actually minimized the frequency of letters so that the attacker cannot identify the pattern from the text however this is not a, a very 
a rigorous approach and the patterns can still be observed uh, using variety of methods. Uh, in uh, comparison to the previous uh, cipher such as place pair cipher, this is an improved version. But however, uh, there are many frequency information still available in the text. One way to overcome this is to automate the key system. A keyword is concatenated with the plain text itself to provide a running key. That means you can, uh, if you have a key, you can, uh, uh, if uh, you have a limited key and the text is longer than the key, you can embed the key with the plain text itself to create a longer key from the plain text. Uh, so, or from the given. Uh, uh, key therefore your key will be more diverse such as in the same application we used in the last slide the message is also the same we are discovered save yourself we have the same key deceptive but the key was less than the text so we added the value of text into the key such as we are discovered say SAV Again, the message is encrypted using the same uh, encryption algorithm discussed in the last slide. This scheme uh, greatly enhances uh, the mechanism to generate the longer keys. However, this scheme is even vulnerable to crypto analysis because the key and the plain text share the same frequency of distribution of letters. Statical, uh, statistical technique can be to identify the frequency of letters so the ultimate defense against such script analysis attack is to choose a more secure algorithm so Vernon cipher is one of the example of a more secure algorithm so this algorithm chooses a keyword that is as long as the plain text and has no statistical relationship to it it was introduced by AT&T engineer named Gilbert Wernham in 1918. So this system works on the binary data bits rather than the letters. So system can be represented as the equation of X or. For example, if you want to encode a message, ciphered message CFI, you will use a character from P and XOR with the K key where PFI is the uh, ith digit in the plain text, KFI is the binary digit of key, CFI is the binary digit of cipher text, and this operation is represented as XOR. So an improvement of Vernon cipher proposed by an Army Signal Corp officer, Joseph Mogborg. It is named as one time pad. So it uses a random key that is as long as the message so that the key need to be repeated. Key is used to encrypt and decrypt a single message very important to consider it, a single message and then the key is discarded so each message requires a new key of the same length as the new message so this scheme is unbreakable so you cannot actually break the message so it produces a random output that bears no statistical relationship to the plain text because the cipher text contains no information whatsoever about the plain text there is simply no way to break the code the one time pad offers complete security however in practice there are two fundamental difficulties the number one difficulty means there are large quantities of keys that you need to maintain and the next problem is distribution of such keys so for example if you have a system that regularly communicates with the another system uh, and requires a millions of transactions in each day you have to provide a million of keys for each message and distribution is also a problem for such uh, 
system that means for each message you have to provide the key to the board to the receiver and the sender so because of these difficulties one time pad is of limited utility that means it, it is used in the limited environment it is used for primarily uh, to the low bandwidth channels and requiring very high security similarly the one time pad is only crypto system that exhibits the perfect secrecy that means this algorithm is unbreakable to the many of our implementation in the uh, in ciphering your encryption algorithm so if you have a scenario where you uh, the secrecy is utmost importance you can actually use this uh, algorithm uh, however if you cannot deal with these two problems you should try to avoid such algorithm all the techniques discussed so far are related to the substitution of cipher text symbol for a plain text symbol however a very different kind of mapping is achieved by performing some sort of permutation on the plain text letters this techniques or set of techniques are referred as transposition cipher the simplest form of such technique is called rail fence cipher plain text is written down as a sequence of diagonals and then read off as sequence of rows so it is written as diagonal form and read as sequence of rows to encipher the message we have a message meet me after the tuga party with the rail fence of depth 2 we would write in a diagonal form that means we use the depth 2 means two uh, lines will be used two rows will be used so we will write in the diagonal form so our encryption message will be m e m a t r something that we cannot understand but if we read in the diagonal we can see it starts from the n and it goes in the diagonal m e e t m e a f t e r t h e t o etc so you can see a pattern in such manner so you can encrypt the message by reading into a uh, diagonal and you can decrypt the message using uh, the diagonal and you can encrypt it uh, using the rows for example you can write the first row and then you can write the second row similarly uh, that was a very simple technique a more complex technique is a row transposition cipher in this technique you can write the message in a rectangle row by row and then read the message of column by column but permeate the order of the columns for example we have the same message uh, sorry we have a different message that message states that attack postponed until 2 a.m. If I write it here, attack post font until 2 a.m. and we embed it with the some random letters at the end. So it is written into the uh, rectangular form and it was written into into uh, rows and columns to read the message uh, or to in to actually encrypt the message we specify order of columns that in which order the message must be read so we started from this column column number one is stated at location three so you can see that it starts from T T N A. Then we move to the second message. 
sorry second column a p p t m t t n a a p p t m similarly the rest of the messages go in the same way again the problem is same here that such kind of transposition can be easily uh, recognized by identifying the distribution of frequencies in the original plain text for the time uh, of column transposition just as shown cryptanalysis is fairly straightforward and involves laying out the ciphertext in the matrix and playing around the column position diagrams and trigram frequency table can be useful the transmission uh, transposition cipher can be made significantly more secure by performing more than one stage of transposition the result is more complex permutation and that is not easily reconstructed so this leads us to the definition of uh, rotor machine so before the encryption of data uh, encryption standards the most important application principle of multiple stage encryption was a class of system known as rotor machine the machine consists of set of independently uh, rotating cylinders through which electrical pulses can flow so each cylinder has 26 input pins and 26 output pins with internal wiring that connects each input pin to the unique output pin for simplicity only three of the internal input connection in each layers are shown so if we associate each input uh, with an output pin such as discussed in this uh, fast rotor machine uh, then a single cylinder defines the mono alphabetic substitution for example you wired the letter a with the rotor machine 24 to another output pin so this defines the mono alphabetic substitution so if you press the letter a an electrical signal is applied to the rotor machine's first pin and the first cylinder flows to the internal connection and it specifies to the 25th pin of the output in that rotor machine so if you have a machine with a, a single cylinder so after each input key is pressed the cylinder rotates one position the, so that the internal connections are shifted accordingly thus a different mono alphabetic substitution of cipher is defined so after 26 letters of plain text the cylinder would be back to initial position thus we have a poly alphabetic substitution algorithm with a period of 26 the power of rotor machine is the use of multiple cylinders in which output pins of one cylinders are connected to the output pins of another cylinder and so on so this uh, example shows the uh, connection of three rotor machine so the uh, with multiple cylinder the first input uh, rotor machine rotates one position after each key stroke it means if you encounter a letter from the plain text and you enter into the rotor machine the keys are shifted by one position that means if the first key was 24 and you enter the key a the next time the first key will be 25 and next time it will be 26 and next time it will be 1 so on so when our uh, the first rotor machine completes its cycle the next rotor machine moves one point similarly when this rotor machine completes its cycle the third most uh, rotor machine moves one point it is much similar to the uh, for understanding uh, to understand the working of clock that means this rotor machine is working as seconds whenever you reach the 60 seconds one shift is made into the minutes rotor machine 
and whenever you read the 60 minutes one point is added to the hours machine so in the uh, case of alphabets there are 26 rotations here for each input and then for each of 26 rotations there will be one rotation in the second rotor machine and there will be total 26 rotations in that machine as well and for each 26 rotation there will be one rotation in the third machine and there will be total 26 rotations in the third machine so that will lead us to a approximately over 17,000 different substitution alphabets that are uh, available for the system to use so you are not restricted to use only three machines uh, you can add another machine uh, you can say you can have the four or five rotor machines and your uh, number will be multiplied by 26 each time you add a new machine so typically a five length rotor machine is equivalent to a winner cipher of a key length of 11 million letters so a code uh, or a text with 11 million letters uh, in a cipher manner it is very difficult to decrypt such message so if uh, for example uh, if an attacker attempts to use a letter frequency analysis approach the analyst is faced with the equivalent of over 11 million mono alphabetic ciphers so uh, we might need uh, on the order of 50 letters in each mono alphabetic cipher for a situation which means that uh, the analyst would need to be in position of cipher text with the length of over half a billion letters the, the significance of the rotor machine uh, today is the it is point the very very large classification uh, symmetric cipher on which data encryption standard is the most prominent so another similar technique uh, is known as steganography it is not a commonly encryption technique a plain text message may be hidden in uh, multiple ways uh, the method of steganography conceals the existence of message whereas the method of encryption renders the message an unreadable message so if you are applying a steganography you are actually hiding some information in some another form of text or image However, we are uh, if we are discussing about the encryption, you are actually changing the uh, original message to another form so that the attacker cannot able to the attacker will not be able to access it. So, for example, uh, this is a puzzle for Inspector Moores, and it is taken from the book Silent and the Silent Word of Nicholas Quinn by Colin Dexter. So this example uh, is a message from sender to the receiver in a uh, letter form. For example, the sequence of the letters of each word in the overall message spell out the hidden message. So in this example, a subset of words of overall message is used to convey the hidden message. So I would like you to stop the uh, recording here or the video on the YouTube here and try to decode the message presented here. So message can be any keywords uh, so you can give it a try. Uh, you can try it uh, uh, by using the uh, using five minutes so that uh, you can uh, identify the message so if you cannot identify the message you can continue the video here so the message uh, hidden here is the last word of each line so if you decrypt the message the message states that your package is ready by Friday
21st room 3 please destroy this immediately various other forms of steganography techniques have been used in the past some examples are following the one is character marking so it is represented at the selected letters of printed or typewritten text or overwritten in pencil the marks are ordinarily not visible unless the paper is held at a an angle to a bright light some are marked with the invisible ink uh, a number of substances can be used for writing but leave no visible visible trace until heat or some chemical apply to the paper so it is only visible if you wash the paper with some chemical a pin puncture is another technique small pin punctures or on selected letters are ordinarily not visible unless the paper is held from a front of a light similarly typewriter correction ribbon is also used in the history it is used between the line type with a clock ribbon resulting typing with a correction tape that are visible under some strong light Stigmography techniques are very old, however, they are still uh, at use uh, at some level. For example, uh, a codec photo CD format uh, has a maximum resolution of 3000 by 6000 pixels and with each pixel containing 25, sorry, 24 bits of red, green, blue color information. The least significant bits of each 24 bit pixel can be changed without greatly affecting that quality of image the result is that you can hide the 120 kb message in a single digital snapshot there are uh, there are now a number of software packages available that can they switch uh, this type of approach to the steganography however uh, steganography have number of drawbacks when compared to the encryption it is, requires a lot of overhead to hide relatively few bits of information and when the system is discovered, it is worthless uh, virtually. The advantages of steganography state that it can be employed by the parties who have something to lose should the fact their secret information be discovered. Encryption flags traffic as important or secret or may identify sender or receiver as something used to hide. Uh, it, it is worth to consider here that uh, any information that you are uh, making using the encryption will be flagged as a traffic of important or secret information. However, if you are uh, transferring information using the steganography, you are actually hiding the information and you have your, uh, your network has no information about the actual contents hidden in the uh, file. For example, if you are transferring an image, it will be considered as an image file on the network. However, if you are using an encryption message, it will be flagged as it is containing some uh, secret information. So there is less chance of attack in steganography. There is more chance of attack in encryption. However, steganography have many drawbacks, so it is not a preferred method to transfer information on secret channels. So this leads to the conclusion of this chapter. Uh, we discussed a number of substitution techniques uh, known as Playfair cipher, Hill cipher, polyalphabetic cipher, and one-time pads. We discussed some uh, transposition techniques such as real turn cipher and row transposition ciphers. We identified uh, the working of rotor machine and we discussed few concepts about the steganography. If you want to read, study more, you can read the chapter 3 of cryptography and network security book. And you can ask me using any of the medium or you can conduct a question and answer session. Thank you very much.